He writes amazingly fierce and independent women. Sure, Jan. Sure, Jan. Sure, Jan. Sure, 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 that's funny. Hello, everyone. Welcome, kings and queens of the internet. My name is Nick Rigdon. Why I think Disney should die. <laughs> Why? Why not? Why the? Drown in it! Drown in it! Wait a damn minute. <laughs> Ugh. It's what she deserves. Now, I have a strong personal relationship with the company Disney. I was a 90s kid. I grew up in the 90s. Heck, even uh, I remember wanting those collectibles from Burger King. Disney was the shining star in the 90s. I remember Walt Disney stores, Disney merchandise. Everyone was obsessed with Disney because this was the time of the Disney Renaissance. This company was set and sailing. Yes, they've had controversies in the past. Yes, they, I think, were forgiven. I don't know if we, we as the American people have forgiven the Disney company yet. But they've always managed to sail through until... 2020 and 2021. Hold on, let's first get into how I'm personally associated with Disney. Growing up, I had a mother who had a friend, and I always referred to her as Princess because she reminded me of the Princess Snow White. I was obsessed with that movie when I was little. Then I became obsessed with the movie The Little Mermaid. She also taught me the little singing, the She taught me that. Actually, the actress who voiced her taught me pitch correction, or at least how to sing a little bit. So I'll give the actress Jodie Benson, I believe is her name. She's right here. I'll give her credit for that. Uh, she taught me how to sing. Thanks, Disney, for using a mermaid to teach me how to sing. That's weirdly sirenish. Now, all my life I wanted to emulate not only the good Lord Jesus, but also a Disney prince. Flynn Rider, Prince Eric, and John Smith, Robin the Fox from Robin Hood. I will say that the fascination between prince and princesses were dynamic and interesting. I admire these characters just as much as I admire Disney princesses. Still wearing Disney merchandise as a 29 year old dude. <sighs> Now, I grew up, I joined the Navy. During that time, Disney was still churning out good movies. Yes, they were going more for the liberal progression archetypes, which is feminism, uh, social justice, I guess. I don't know. But they started leaning more in that direction, but were still putting out good characters and good stories, such as Frozen and Moana. And those were the last two good ones that I enjoyed. Yeah, they're headed downhill, we'll get into that, okay? First, let me just point out several things. Now, Disney has had controversy in the past um, by being kind of a uh, Song of the South and the Crows from Disney, or Crows from Disney, well, Crows from Disney, but Crows from Dumbo. That's all you really need to know. But they overcame this with progression and over time starting to accept more interesting and, you know, universal, diverse, and ideas. It was starting to go good in the 90s and then in the early 2000s, the 2010, 2010s, 2000, how do you, do we, how do we even say that phrase anymore? 2010s? That sounds made up. Now, a, a lot of the executive decisions were signing on people such as J.J. Abrams and Kathleen Kennedy. Kathleen Kennedy was an associate producer and maybe even executive producer for some of the most famous films in Hollywood, while J.J. Abrams has the 
gold touch of Steven Spielberg himself. These people have turned out hits before. They wanted blockbusters. They wanted that feminist money. They wanted that social justice money. Here comes the money. money, money, money. <laughs> now, it wasn't later in the 2016-2019 range when we actually started this being an incorporated incorporated all these ideals into our movies. Heck, even 2020 and 2021 are just filled with hypocrisy. Filled with hypocrisy to the brim. To the brim! Like, to, to the ever-exhausting overload hypocrisy. It's ridiculous. Now, you may be saying to yourself, Nick, where is this evidence of all this feminism, ideals, and not the real feminism, the SJW feminism. So I'm going to say that now. The SJW feminism ideals were starting to show up in Star Wars. He has an amazing uniqueness to what he does. He also writes as beautifully as he directs, which is quite incredible. And um, he writes amazingly fierce and independent women. By the Walt Disney Company has been amazing because they very much support the fact that we are trying to grow uh, in the workforce a number of women in executive positions and in all positions inside the company and with the movies that we're making and with the protagonists that we're putting in the story. With the character Ray, who is a Ma race. Her literal flaws are, she wants to find people to love and give her guidance. She believes in the good of people, even if they are evil. There is nothing wrong with this heavenly creature. No hardship or cross she has to bear. She's not greedy, prideful, self-centered, emotionally stunted, emotionally unstable, selfish, reckless, overconfident, naive, blinded by love, womanizing, stupid, psychopathic, self-righteous, narcissistic, inexperienced, overly ambitious, narrow-minded, morally ambiguous, or arrogant. She has no vendetta, addiction, superiority complex, bloodlust, jealousy, or lust for power. She is a person with no flaw that could be considered something to work on personally while being incredible at every activity she engages in. This, in common analysis, is known as a Mary Sue. As much as people fight the tide on this, it is exactly what Ray is. She is a classic example. It has nothing to do with her being a girl. A Mary Sue character isn't good for a story because there's no room to grow, to learn, to change. She's already made it there. She's already better than Luke, Poe, Kai Finn, and the rest of the characters as they have a semblance of a flaw that is utilized in the film. Arguably. But not her. She is perfection, while going through no hardships or tough lessons. In fact, she imparts lessons to other far more experienced individuals regularly. I bypassed the compressor. Huh. What are you doing back there? Working on it. You will never be as strong as Darth Vader. <sighs> She's a Mary Sue character archetype. She's a Mary Sue. Anyway, okay. Besides her longing for her family and parents, what would you say is another weakness for Ray? I do not think that is a weakness. Great question, but I don't think it's a weakness. So yeah. Do you think she has any just kind of inherent weaknesses or? I mean, I don't really believe in weaknesses in people. Okay. And then we got our very own Ma Ray Sue in the Marvel Universe, Captain Marvel. Do I need to just even go over the crap of Captain Marvel? I'll give you a short little video for that because uh, I can't personally do it. Like, there are better editors on YouTube than I. Captain Marvel, what is it? A uh, her? A hero? What? A female superhero? A male superhero? But without a penis? Surely not. What What a novelty! Such creative innovation! It's never been done before! Except for Wonder Woman, Catwoman, Supergirl, Harley Quinn. But they weren't made by Disney's Marvel Studios, so they don't count. Okay. Yeah, that, that seems a little bit odd, but surely with the movie Mulan, who's all about a strong independent character and very loved and cherished by all Disney fans, especially with the amazing song, Mushu. 
Disney released its live-action remake of the movie Mulan in theaters in China three days ago, and it was a slow start. The film is about a young woman who disguises herself as a man and takes her father's place in the army to defend imperial China from invaders. It was meant to be a hit in one of the world's biggest movie markets. Instead, it's been embroiled in controversy. NPR's John Ruwich explains. Mulan drew an estimated $23.2 million during opening weekend in China. That's a soft start in a target market of over a billion people, but just the latest headache the movie's given Disney. There was controversy last year when lead actress Liu Yifei supported Hong Kong police in their crackdown on pro-democracy demonstrations. And this month, keen-eyed critics noticed that part of the movie was filmed in the Chinese region of Xinjiang. Disney thanks Xinjiang authorities in the credits. The Chinese government is accused of persecuting Muslims in Xinjiang in the name of fighting terrorism. Calls for a boycott of Mulan have grown. Disney is keeping its head down. But I thought Disney was progressive. Uh, Which is it? What values are you going with? Feminism bad, but Mulan empowered, but also submits to men. Uh, Gender roles good, no, bad. Uh, Disney good, no, military good. China bad, no, progressive good, bad. But, uh, But, oh no, 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 no. This is not your Mulan that you love. It's actually a Chinese product near made concentration camps. But hey guys, guys, before you say anything about the concentration camps and how Walt Disney worked with them, it was really hard to work with concentration camps. That was their excuse. I see. We see each other. We see each other. We do. And yes, you do hear a cat and she hunts mice. Are you are you almost ready to hunt Mickey Mouse? The evil rat? Not only not only was the movie moved on, working with concentration camps that are running in communist China. They also made another Mary Sue character out of Mulan. Yeah, she has magic chi powers. And even though she prominently displays them in front of everyone, nothing happens. Isn't she going to be burnt to the stake as a witch? Wouldn't she join that other witch? Yeah, by the way, they made it a more realistic movie by putting a magic witch that can turn into a bird. How is that more realistic? If you were gonna go this route, just make Mushu bigger and with a deeper voice, but still telling kind of jokes and still being serious. You can do that, Disney, but whatever. Like, yeah, ooh, I'm sorry it offended China. Um, okay, why are you looking at China for their money when we have money that you're not tapping into? Yeah, we're not giving you the money because you're doing all this stupid crap. Figure it out. But they they sided with people who were, you know, just torturing people with human rights abuses in a concentration camp. And they just worked for them. They even thanked them in their end credits. How stupid are these people? Bob Chapek and Kathleen Kennedy? You're dumb, and you should be roasted to hell, both equally, don't care if you're a man or a woman. Some of y'all is fat and ugly and unattractive, but that is okay. Just be who you are. So, three strikes, you're out, right? It would make sense. Did not apply to Disney or Kathleen Kennedy or Bob J. Peck. It did not, no. Actually, they kind of just brushed that under the rug. I see you, Mickey Mouse, you sneaky little bitch. Then, the whole Gina Carano thing happened. And I don't even need to explain that because anyone who's been on YouTube or anyone who watches YouTube knows what happened with that whole debacle. Like, the honest truth of it. And how Disney is trying to sweep that under the rug real damn quick. Those are some of the major problems I have with Disney. There are also minor problems to the situation. Yeah. Um, Lucasfilm and employees making fun of fans doesn't really sit well with people who like the brand. But these employees are allowed to say whatever the heck and make fun of the fans and not listen to the fans and call them racists and istiophobes. That's okay by Disney. Now, this is just another very, very minor grievance. Because I have to state them all on this long Disney rant. I might as well go and just 
go ahead. But, with the Beauty and the Beast remake, y'all got Emma Watson? This, this, this movie was... I cherished the character of Belle. Y'all gave Emma Watson as a representation of Belle. Number one, the girl can't act. You can't. If if Emma Watson ever sees this, you can't act, and I'm okay with that. It's not because you're a woman, it's because you don't know how to act. Now, as of today, so I did have a whole video planned and filmed, and then I was just like, screw it, it looks awful. Disney stockholders are starting to wonder if there's a double standard in Hollywood, and especially when it comes to Disney. Yes, there was a stockholder who asked in one of their meetings, quarterly meetings, I think, for throughout the year, he asked about the double standard in Hollywood and about the Gina Carano firing. And Bob J. Peck, who is a, um, Bob J. Peck, just said in response, oh, well, Disney isn't a right-leaning or left-leaning organization. Bitch, what? Girl, that, uh, there's more, what? Yeah, there's more. Now, when he was specifically asked about the Gina Carano firing, these are his exact words. Now, I'm going to have to read this and then flip back because I don't want to, you know, give out misinformation about what someone had said. The stockholders, speaking during the Q&A portion of Disney's annual shareholder meeting, noted that co-stars Pedro Pascal and Gina Carano both controversially referenced Nazi Germany in social media comments, but only she was removed. What about the Disney blacklist? He asked. Get in some tea tea! Oh, some tea! JPEG, as the spineless person he is, they did not write that, I added that, didn't speak to the Corano incident directly, but said that Disney stands for values that are universal. Respect, decency, integrity, and inclusion. And we seek to have a con- We seek to have the content that we make reflective of the rich diversity of the world we live in. And I think that's a world we should all live in in harmony and peace. What? What Miss America was he auditioning for? Bob, Bob J. Bob Chapstick. I hate to bring this girl up, but y'all remember that, like, Miss, Miss, uh, pretty blonde girl who, like, said, and, um, the Middle East and America and the maps and the children. I feel like... Bob Chapstick, Chapcock, just did that. And the U.S. should help the U.S. or should help South Africa and should help the Iraq and the Asian countries. What about the Gina Carano firing? Well, the company and universal uh, values, respect, decency, honor, and integrity, and we should all live in a peaceful, harmonious world. Y'all, he gave us <laughs> that Miss America crappy pageant answer. But you're talking to your shareholders, dude. Like, these people are investing their money in you. By the way, shareholders of Disney, y'all have money in a sinking ship. Take it out. Put it into people who are doing free movies and more independent films. Stop investing in Disney. <laughs> We'll get to what Bob said. Put it in a blender, shit on it, vomit on it. Disney's had so many blunders and just keep saying really dumb stuff. Just really stupid stuff. Y'all ain't, they ain't learning their lesson. So we've got to teach them one. Just metaphorically let it burn. Metaphorically let it burn. It's, it's over. The mouse is now... Very much like Palpatine in the Star Wars trilogies. Um, spoilers. But yeah, the mouse is now decrepit and dead, but still ha somehow alive. 
My name is Nick Rigdon. Thank you, kings and queens, for watching me and watching this video. If you do like this content, please like and subscribe. If you don't like this video, leave an angry comment because I'll also read it and then think really hard about whether I want to live to about 70 or not. So, please drop and like and comment. Thanks, kings and queens of the internet. Bye. What do you think about Hitler? I'm assuming that's some kind of rapper. I'm sure he's amazing. Cause I like his name to be honest. Hitler.